Hello friends, in this session we will talk about the LIBOS scandal. So LIBOS scandal effectively happened in 2005 to 2009 in this particular period and then it was unveiled in 2012. The question is why are we studying or talking about the LIBOR in 2021? So the reason is very simple, LIBOR will be abandoned and it will be replaced by the SOFR and the SONIA. SOFR stands for the secured overnight financing rate and SONIA stands for the sterling overnight uh, interbank average rate. Okay, so these two rates will replace the LIBOR starting 2020 and 2023. So it becomes very important to understand why we are replacing the LIBOR or why LIBOR will be abandoned. Okay, so it will be abandoned by the ICE. ICE is the Intercontinental Exchange who reports the LIBOR. Okay, who reports the daily LIBOR. So let's start with the first. We will start with the history first. Like what was the LIBOR? How it like when it came into the picture? When the scandal happened? And then we will talk about how it was transferred from the BBA to ICE. And we will also see the calculation methodology, just an overview. And then we will see how the scandal was um, done. Okay, so the like the basics of the scandal. We'll try to keep this discussion as short as possible to make sure. We are able to get the idea of the lab or scandal without uh, getting in like investing much time in it. Reason is very simple because anyway it is going to be replaced or and we have new reference rates now. And how it is important for your FRM or CFA curriculum. The reason like see you, we are all using uh, LIBOR for our calculations for power trade swap swap option CTC. And this will be replaced by some other reference rate. So it is better to know what is LIBOR, how the calculations are done, and then why it is being replaced. The main reason is the scandal. And then I will also give you the another reason why ICE is saying that we should abandon it. Okay, it proposed uh, abandoning of the LIBOR in 2020. So we will also talk about why it is abandoning it. And because it is getting abandoned and uh, in FRM part two specifically, we have current issues topics. So starting 2020, um, there is a discussion in current issues about the replacement of LIBOR, right? So to understand those topics, it is better to always first understand the LIBOR, right? LIBOR and LIBOR scandal. So first, let's start with the LIBOR. So what is LIBOR? LIBOR is the IBOR, Interbank Offered Rate. So this IBOR or LIBOR are calculated based on the bank's reports, the leading bank's reports. There are panel banks who tells like, okay, at this particular rate, I will be able to borrow or I would like to borrow uh, say particular sum of money and this rate is considered as a risk-free rate. So LIBOR acts as a risk-free rate or a reference rate for the risk-free rate uh, because it is this this transaction is happening or it is assumed to be happening between the leading banks, right? So that's why it is used as a risk-free reference rate and it is used in the lot of products. Before LIBOR, the treasury rates were used as a reference rate for the risk free rate why treasury rates obviously because it is these are the government issued securities and obviously government issued securities are generally risk free for that reason it is assumed as these treasury rates are the risk free rates but the problem with the treasury rate is it is considered as understated understated as in because there are a lot of incentives for the investment institutions or the institutions to invest into these treasuries the rate is quoted lower okay because there are tax benefits, so government thinks that, okay, we are providing you tax benefits, so we will pay you lesser interest rate. That's why these are understated. That's why reference rate, as the reference rate, LIBOR was considered as a sound, reasonable, robust. Okay. So, in theory, if you want to see, like this, LIBOR is the London Interbank Offered Rate. Again, I will repeat, it is IBOR, Interbank Offered Rate. So, we have in India, we have my bot, Mumbai Interbank Offered Rate. Okay, so for other countries, they, they have their respective IBOTs, Interbank Offered Rate, based on their country, right? So LIBOR is an interest rate average calculated for estimates submitted by the leading banks in London. LIBOR represents the low, lowest real world cost of unsecured funding in the London, London market. So here we have the unsecured, unsecured is generally considered as risky. But here the logic of unsecured is like it is not going to affect that much because um, the banks, the leading banks are not likely to default, right? So because these are the big banks and obviously the, uh, the funds will be recovered, right? So from that perspective, it is considered as risk free. It is used as a reference rate for the standard products, uh, standard interbank pro products, commercial field products and hybrid products. So just to give the example of the standard products and the commercial products, which you are already aware of, the FRAs, interest rate futures, swap options, overnight index swap, 
so everything is in your syllabus then commercial field products are the floating rate notes term loan ctc so these are just to name a few these are the products which uses libor as a reference rate as a risk free rate consideration right next the history of libor so i will start with the history of libor and i will take you into the 2022 and 2023 like what is going to happen in these two years so first libor came into the existence or in the widespread use in 201970 so libor came into the widespread use then scandal happened in between 2005 2008 this scandal was first time reported by the Wall Street Journal. I will explain you what was a scandal. Don't worry about it. For now, just know that it was first reported by the Wall Street Journal. But no one took a note of it. So central agencies or central banks were saying that there is no data to prove that there is a LIBOR scandal. A LIBOR is manipulated. If you have to give this short information about the LIBOR scandal. So LIBORs were these rates were underreported or manipulated so that these institutions can take the advantage from their transactions. Barclays was the main culprit here. So Barclays organized the scandal. Okay, so there were other participant banks, but the lab, uh, the Barclays was the main participant, right? So who uh, orchestrated this particular scandal? So that's why the Barclays was fined for the attempted manipulation with the other banks. So other banks were also fined. Barclays was, was also fined. And then CEO got jailed and all, all those things are there. Okay. So it was unveiled in 2012. In 2014, ICE, Intercontinental Exchange, took over the administration of LIBOR from BBA, British Bankers Association. British Bankers Association, right? In 2020, ICE proposes cessation of LIBOR publication. So LIBOR will cease to exist. So it, uh, like just... Uh, proposed like okay we should abandon the LIBOR and now the current plan is by 2022 ICE will cease publishing one week and two month LIBOR so only two rates and by 2023 all the remaining rates will be wrapped up now the LIBOR's process as per the BBA, British Bankers Association. So there is slight difference, a small difference between the BBA's calculation and the uh, ICE calculation. Sorry, the, not slight difference. The only difference is in the calculation. Rest of the process is the same. So what is the process, how this works? So BBA, ICE, both, asks major banks a question. The question is, at what rate could you borrow funds were you to do so by asking for and then accepting interbank offers in a reasonable market size just prior to 11 a.m. So this exercise is done on a daily basis like in the morning, say by 9, 9.30. So uh, now the ICE at that time the BBA and uh, the BBA was the administrator but Thomson Reuters was the one who whose job was to collect these rates. Okay, so the BBA, I will just say BBA. So BBA will ask all these leading banks. So there is always a panel of banks. Okay, so fixed panel of banks. So there are 16 banks. There were 16 banks for other rates and 18 banks for the dollar LIBOR. Okay, so LIBOR was quoted based on the currency, different, different currencies. And for all the remaining currencies from the complete list, 16 panel banks were there. And uh, for the USD, there were 18 panel banks. And all these banks were supposed to reply to the question that is at what rate they are able to borrow or they want to borrow. Now how this works is like if the bank is facing some problem in borrowing automatically bank should quote a higher rate. Okay, so in normal scenario say bank is quoting 3%. So in stress period obviously bank should be quoting slightly more 4% 5% that at rate I am ready to borrow because I have some situation here, right? I am lacking in cash. I don't have cash in my hand. So I want to borrow. So this was assumed. This was the consideration in the process, right? So banks will report based on what they think about the market, right? So it was a reflection of the market. At the same time, one thing you need to uh, know is like, it is not necessary for the banks, even now, it is not necessary for the banks to trade on these rates. So bank might quote, say 3% in the morning and say at 12 in the noon bank might be trading at or bank might be using 3.25 for their reference rate for any say um, swap or 
by far. Okay. So it was not compulsory for the bank to trade on these bands. It was just a quotation, like what they feel about. There were 18 participants who were reporting on this, okay, for the various currencies and maturities. And as I told you, like, uh, sorry, 16 participants and 18 for the USD. Most importantly, the offer rate being calculated as hypothetical one and not based on the actual market transactions. This is the main area where things are changing now. So Stopper and Sonia, both the rates are actual market based rates. Okay. So these are calculated based on the transactions which are happening in the market. Thomson Reuters acts as a LIBOR collecting agent. So Thomson Reuters is the data collection in the news agency whose job is to collect the LIBOR rates and then report it, calculate it in the report rate. LIBOR currencies. So I will just give you the currencies. Currently active currencies are the USD, Euro, uh, uh, Pounds, Japanese Yen, Swiss franc. And before BBA, this is for the ICE, okay, after ICE took over. And all these are for the BBA, okay, when the BBA was controlling it. So why this uh, like abandoned the LIBOR, the process, the reason is very simple. The reason is, uh, the reason is because of this particular scandal, they lost faith uh, on the LIBOR, okay, on this process. So they came up with their own local benchmark. Rates. Right. So these are inactive now. So these currencies are currently not quoted for the LIBOR. Now LIBOR maturities. Here also we have active and inactive. So previously it was like one day, uh, one week, two week, uh, then one day, one week, two week, then one month, two months, three months, four months, and so on for all the months, remaining months. Okay. Now current active rates are only for one day, one week, one month, two months, three months, six months, 12 months. Again, the logic is same active. That is after take over, it is taken over by the eyes. The administration is taken over the eye, uh, taken over by the eye. Only these rates are active previously. All these rates were active. So it was not like just answering question for one particular uh, currency, right? So they were supposed to answer for all the currencies and different, different maturities. Fine. Now the LIBOR calculation, BBA versus ICE. So the basic, as, as I told you, like the basics are same. The basic is that rates are requested by asking questions in same process is follow, followed in the uh, ICE as well. Now in BBA, this interquartile trimmed mean methodology was used. So what was the interquartile trim methodology? So for the nine currencies panel, that is I'm excluding USD here. Panel of 16 reports, what they were used to do is they will drop bottom rates. So obviously all the 16 will quote different, different rates. Okay. So they will drop top four rates and bottom rates and for the remaining rates, they will take the average. Okay, that's why interquartile interquartile trimmed mean, and then for the USD because there were the eighteen panel banks, eighteen banks. So it, you cannot directly say it as the interquartile because there is no quartile here. Okay, so that's why the rule was very simple: drop top four and bottom four, and then mean is calculated. Okay, so this this was the process for the BBA. In the ICE, the process is quite complicated and. No, it is known as the waterfall methodology. So there are multiple steps for the calculation of the LIBOR after it is collected. So here the banks includes in case of BBA, the banks were like the Bank of America, Barclays, Citibank, Doshe, JP Morgan Chase, UBS and so on. So, okay. so UBS, uh, Barclays, all these banks were culprit and involved in the uh, LIBOR manipulation. And here the panel was fixed. Okay. The significant change in case of ICE is that only those banks that have significant role in London market are considered eligible for the membership on the ICE LIBOR panel and the selection process is held annually, meaning there are, there are no fixed banks. Okay. So banks will change on year on year basis. Fine. Now what is the LIBOR scandal? So this is very easy to answer the easiest question to answer. So major banks colluded 
to manipulate the LIBO by under-reporting the LIBO. So there was under-reporting of the LIBO and the purpose was to improve their valuation of existing financial derivatives position. So they had a position, they wanted to improve their positions, they want to over-report their position, that's why they were under-reporting it. So they were trading on the different rate, but they were reporting different rates, okay. And this particular scandal came into light specifically when in 2008 crisis. Okay, so in 2008 crisis, what happened? They kept under-reporting it and whole market was uh, going out of control, but still LIBOR was very stable. So that um, like, uh, that was a reason why it came into the light. Okay, so something is going on with the LIBOR. So, and we should take into, like, we should take a look into it. And WSJ Wall Street Journal was first to report on it. And it reported like, okay, so this is happening. The manipulations are happening. And at the time, no action was taken by the regulators by saying no data to support this particular issue. That is the manipulations are going on. In 2010, the Economist, Economist is very famous magazine, reported or corroborated the WSJ's report. The only difference here is, the difference is that WSJ reported that manipulation is going on to appear strong in the crisis. Okay. Now see here, what is the thing here? Uh, if banks start to report LIBOR at a higher rate, as we discussed, right? So what is the meaning of reporting higher rate? Meaning banks are facing trouble in borrowing funds, right? So if the banks are facing trouble in borrowing funds, meaning there is a, this is not a good situation. So banks are in trouble. So they wanted to make sure like, okay, we are strong enough. We are big banks and we are strong enough. That's why they were under reporting it. This was as per the WSJ's report. And then as per the economist report that no banks were not under reporting it for uh, like to, uh, to look stronger in case of the crisis. They were under reporting it or they were manipulating the rates to profit from the interlinked portfolios. And for this, this is the chat between the Barclays trader and uh, in the New York to this uh, to submitters. The this particular chat goes like, "Hey guys, we got a big position in three month LIBOR for next three days. Can we please keep LIBOR fixing at five point three nine for next few days? It would be it would really help. We do not want to fix any higher than this. Thanks a lot." Okay. So definitely there was some collusion. Ideally, what was supposed to happen? Like ideally it should have been like every bank is reporting their independent opinion on it. And then the top four and bottom four are being eliminated and the average was calculated, right? So this was supposed to happen, but what was happening in reality, the reality was very different, right? So they were colluding, they were under reporting it. Now next, what's next? So next is LIBOR will be replaced by the reference rates, so new reference rates, which are actual transaction based, right? Now see, previously LIBOR is not actual transaction based. So if you keep or use the reference rate, which are actual transaction based, then automatically the manipulations can't happen, right? And definitely not that easily. So during this trans transition times, ARR are being tried, okay? Alternate reference rates are being tried and tested and improved like Sonia. Sonia was uh, first came into the picture around in 2017 and some, and then in 2019, it was again relaunched, right? So with a new improved methodology of calculation. So we have like SOFR is for the USD LIBOR. So USD LIBOR will be replaced by the SOFR and Sonia will replace the GBP LIBOR. Again, SOFR is secured overnight financing rate and Sonia is installing overnight index average rate index average okay so that's all about the basics of the LIBOR scandal so we talked about the LIBOR scandal what is going to happen next and so on and we also saw the surface level calculation now after this like the detailed discussion we will uh, do in the current issues section frm part two two topics are there about the replacing LIBOR and how, what's going on right now so I will also upload those videos on the YouTube. So if you are interested, you can watch those videos to know more about, even if you are not studying FRM, say you are CFA student, even if you are not studying in the FRM part two and you don't have those topics in your syllabus, it is good to know about what's going on or what is happening in the current market, right? So that's all about the LIBOR scandal for now. See you in the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.